Welcome to this video that I have uh, made for you to explain my concertina tablature. Uh, I designed this tablature for use with a 30 button Jackie treble concertina which is made by Concertina Connection uh, in the United States but it could be adapted for any English concertina with more or less buttons. Uh, I designed this because although I read music I found I could play more fluently using this tablature. So the tablature takes the form of a spreadsheet made in the numbers software for Mac uh, but could easily be made using Excel. I will provide blank sheets in numbers and PDF form so that you can make your own tablature. I'm using Morning Has Broken as an example because it is a very easy tune in the key of C major counting in threes. So if you look you can see four pages or four sheets I should say one here, uh, second one here, third one here and the fourth one down here and the first three the three biggest sheets are the three pages of the actual music and I'll explain this fourth one a little bit later on in the video. So first of all look on the left hand side of the page at this first sheet this one here and it says morning is broken in C that's the key C major for English concertina this is page one and underneath you can see some other directions count in threes read downwards harmony notes or accompaniment in brackets and that will make a bit more sense as I go through. The two main columns are left and right that's the left side of the concertina and the right side of the concertina uh, from your perspective as the player as you look down on your instrument and there's a bellows column in the middle here uh, so that you can orientate yourself. The way I play is I use three fingers of each hand and my little fingers are placed under the finger rest so I actually don't use the little fingers to press any of the buttons. Uh, finger one is used on the top two rows nearest the thumb strap Finger two deals with notes on row three and finger three deals with the notes on the bottom row which are nearer, nearest the finger rest. I strongly suggest that you learn off by heart the notes that each button produces on your instrument. On my tablature uh, I label the lowest pitched uh, G A sharp or B flat if you like and B on the right side plus the lowest pitched A and C on the left side low as there is a note with the same name two octaves higher on the same side. So you can see on this music there's a low C here and there's a low B over here. The three fingers of each hand, left and right, have a column. Finger one, finger two, finger three for the left side, finger one, finger two, finger three for the right side. On the left hand side of each sheet uh, is a counting column to help you with the timing. So you can see one, two, three, one, two, three. The reason I picked this piece is that all the notes are on the beat. Uh, then there are no kind of and counts, but we will deal with some music that's got that a little bit later on in another video. So this is how you read the tablature. The first note you can see is low C. It's on the left hand side of the, of the concertina and it's played using the first finger of the left hand. Looking at the counting uh, on the left hand side you will see that this note lasts uh, for the whole of beat one for the count of one. Now drop to the next row. The note is E on the left side of the concertina finger two and it comes on the beat of two. Uh, drop to the next row the note is G left hand side of the concertina finger one. So, so far all of the notes have been on the left hand side and they've fallen on the first, second and third beats of the bar. Uh, there's only one E and one G note on the left hand side of my concertina but obviously if you're playing an instrument with a bigger range you might need to label these uh, in something meaningful for you. Now you can see a thick horizontal line indicating at the end of the bar. There's three beats in each bar so every time you see this thick horizontal line you'll know you've reached the end of a bar and we've reached the end of the first bar of the tune. We've played three notes. So in other words each row carries one note usually although right at the end of the piece over here you can see there are two notes because they're played together but we'll deal with that 
when we come to it. Now in the next row, you can see a C note on the right side of the concertina on the count of one, but it fills up, you can see there's no lines here, it fills up all three beats of the bar. So you've got to play it and keep it sustaining for three beats. Similarly, the D in this next bar on the left hand side does the same thing. It's played on beat one, it's held for beats one, two and three for the whole of the bar. So basically you keep reading down the sheet, dealing with each note that you come to in turn till you come to the bottom of the sheet and then move over to page two or if you like this second sheet here. In the third bar of this sheet you have a D on the right side. Here it is. And it lasts for six beats. It lasts for the whole of the three beats of this bar and the whole of the three beats of this bar. Um, but here's a, an extra little thing, a little bit of a, a more advanced technique. On the first beat of the second of these two bars, you introduce a low B also on the right hand side of the instrument, which will sound uh, with the D and it will give you a nice little bass harmony uh, for the last three beats that this D is held for. So in other words, the D is held for six beats and this low B comes in on beat four, if you like, uh, the first beat of the second of these two bars. Any harmony notes like this, I put in brackets so you can see it's not the main tune. It is, uh, what I've said, a little bass harmony, a little bit of accompaniment, if you like. And so all the way down this sheet, dealing with each note in turn, okay? Uh, and then you go to page three, each note in turn, all the way down. And on the very end, like I said earlier, you can see you have a low C uh, and an E on the left hand side that are played together, not like this D and the B was over here, but together and they're held for six beats, two complete bars to give you a little chord, sort of a C major chord to finish the piece. The small sheet, which you can see bottom right, is a list and it's got all the notes in ascending order that you find in this piece, ranging from low B, which is the B just below middle C on the piano, up to the D, uh, which is just over an octave above middle C. Uh, you've got all the notes of a C major scale except for F, notice no F is used in this tune. So that's the explanation and you might say, well why bother with this? If you can read music. Well all I can say is that I find this method really easy to read and it helps me to be more accurate. If you can't read music at all then this tab will be perfect for you because at a glance you can see the following information. The note name like here, which side of the concertina it's on, left or right, which finger plays it, one, two or three, and how long it lasts from this counting column over on the left hand side. I mean I did experiment with putting more information in like numbering the notes to indicate pitch and I also tried labelling up notes on the top row that I played with the first finger extended but I abandoned this because I felt it cluttered up the page unnecessarily. This is a nice easy piece of music to get you started and you'll probably know the tune pretty well I'm guessing and I will do uh, more tunes in the future and perhaps make it a little bit more uh, complicated as we go. Anyway, thanks for watching and here's what the piece sounds like. <laughs>